If you've been following along on my channel, you're familiar with this guy by now. This is my new toy that I found the other day on the side of the road. And in that video, I asked you guys what was it. And it was a real question. I didn't know what I was looking at. I gave you a couple ideas of what I thought was going on here. Um, after reading your comments and doing some research online, it turns out this is called a centrifugal clutch. And basically what it does is there are feet on the inside of here with springs. And once the motor gets up to speed, those feet spread out and grab onto this, uh, to the inside of this drum canister deal here. And then that drives the belt, which drives the tub. So you might be thinking, well, why go through all the trouble to separate the shaft from the tub? Well, what they're trying to do is prevent shock loads from the tub coming back to the motor. So if something suddenly falls down in a washing machine or gets jammed to one side, all of that force suddenly stopping the tub doesn't uh, jam up the motor while it's trying to spin. So this is really ingenious. I want to see it in action because it turns out that this is a two-speed drum. And that just gives me all kinds of ideas of things that I could do with this motor uh, now that I have a two-speed motor. So the first thing we got to do is figure out how to actuate this. Now I know I need to run current through it, but should it be DC or AC? Uh, I don't know. So we're going to figure that out here in just a minute, what kind of voltage we need and whether we need AC or DC. And then we're going to check the speeds, which is why I put this reflective tape. Uh, this one is directly connected to the shaft. And this one, as you can see, is on the clutch. Let's do some experiments. First, we're going to try powering it with DC current. I've got this uh, Dell power supply that I got from an old laptop. And as you can see here on the label, it says that it's AC 120 volts or 240 at about uh, 1.5 amps. And for the output, it's DC 19 and a half volts and 4.6 amps. So you could think of this as sort of a uh, bridge rectifier and transformer all combined into one. The transformer stepping down the voltage and the bridge rectifier or the diodes uh, rectifying the current from AC to DC. Keep your eyes right here and let's see what happens. Hmm. Uh, nothing. I don't even hear a hum, so. So, that's 19 volts, and I'm going to guess it's probably not much more than that for a small electrical component like this, not in DC at least. So, let's go ahead and switch to AC. Right here I've got my auto transformer. And instead of plugging this directly into the wall, I'm going to plug this into here first. And that way I can slowly dial up the voltage just in case it doesn't need 120 volts. Alright, I'm going to get you in a little closer so you can see this. Yes! Did you hear that? Alright, so we're at about, it says 90, but that's more like 100 volts on this guy. The scale is a little bit off on this side. So definitely, this is probably normally wired to 120 volts. Sweet. Okay, now we know. Alright, now that we've got our lever figured out, that's going to engage our second speed on the clutch. Now we're going to go ahead and test the speed as it is. Now, if you're curious about how I wired this up, you can watch video number 11 and video number 17, and I'll show you how to figure out uh, which wires are the start wi uh, starter winding, which ones are the run winding, and so on. But for now, for simplicity, I've just got the run winding wired, which in this case was blue and yellow. And I'm going to kickstart it manually, so normally you wouldn't have to start the motor like that. But we're just in testing stages and I'm kind of ready to get started, so here we go. Alright, shaft speed. Clutch speed. Alright, let's see what happens when you actuate the other one.
Well, that was interesting. It turns out that this shaft is moving forward and backward. And the safety police is going to get me on that one. This whole assembly can move forward and so the arm was actually outside of... Well... Huh. All right, let's try it one more time. Okay, so right now the speed is one to one. So it looks like once it's up to speed, these arms are, have moved and they no longer travel in the path of the arm here. So what I think I'm going to do this time is I'm going to activate this first and then start the motor. And let's see what happens. All right, let's try the other way. All right, so it's definitely slower at 1660. seems like these two feet here are attached to the spring mechanism which springs out and grabs the inside of the tub here of the drum and as long as you can keep that component from spinning up and stretching out then it'll run at lower speeds but um, it's not on the load it's just free spinning right so what happens if there's a load on there let's figure it out all right, we've changed the setup a little bit. Now, this rig I built for my speed control video, and it allows me to put various motors up here, attach them to my lathe for some speed testing <clears throat> under load. We're gonna use this motor under the same circumstances. I've clamped this motor here, and now we've got the weight of this assembly, and if necessary, I can sand a piece of wood and add some more resistance and uh, add some additional load here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in first without activating the switch and let's see what happens. The clutch is spinning at the same speed as the shaft. Oh, we can get it there. All right, this time let's try it with the switch engaged. And there's the motor. Now that's more like it. So now the speed is 1127. And if you look really closely,
you can see that arm bouncing on there. It just, it can't go by. That solenoid switch kicks in first. And then the drum can never get up to speed. That clutch, that is. All right, so now we have a really good idea of how this works. Uh, as long as there's any load, I didn't even have to sand anything. Um, the clutch is not allowed to fully engage. And that essentially is your second speed. That, uh, what I'm just gonna call the slip speed. There's probably a more official term for that. But what to do with it? I don't think I wanna use this on my lathe. Obviously, I've got a better solution for that. And that's that guy. But, um, what do you guys think? Why don't you let me know in the comments what kind of fun things can we do with this that might make it useful uh, or just interesting to look at. I look forward to hearing what you think.